Hello again. I'm going to try this. Um, I'm using a different device to record um, and the camera is cattywampus. So the only way I think I'm looking and making eye contact with you is if I look to the left of my face. You ever tried that? That is really hard to do. But anyway, uh, there are worse things in life. So <laughs> anyway, um, thanks again for joining us uh, for our daily devotionals. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to, to uh, do this. And I, I pray that this is encouraging and helpful uh, to you guys. Uh, so here we are. Today is, um, well, I guess I'm recording this on Tuesday and you'll see it on Wednesday, but uh, we're finding out uh, today that it looks like it's another month of this coronavirus thing. And um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were thinking by this time, maybe things would be starting to get back to normal, but um, we're learning that it could take at least uh, two more weeks, maybe longer before this thing peaks. And um, so, uh, in other words, it's, it's likely to get worse before it gets better. So, uh, so my question today is, how do you feel about that? I'm sure there are a lot of people that you know and that I know uh, that when they think of another month uh, of a lockdown uh, or unemployment or isolation, uh, they just find it hard to breathe. And I've, I've heard people say this, so I know this is true. There is such fear and such anxiety out there right now because of this crisis. And what makes it worse is that this is not something that we have uh, brought upon ourselves. Uh, this is a natural disaster. This, I mean, we could point fingers, but the bottom line is no one can control this. We have no choice but just to ride it out and hope for the best. Now, that's probably not the encouragement you wanted to hear today. But it brings us squarely into the heart of verse 4 of the 23rd Psalm. David writes there about a place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death, a place of danger and darkness, a place where hope and joy are in short supply, a place of suffering. Now, one thing I love about the Bible is that it never lies to us about life. Uh, it's, it never just, you know, sits there and pumps sunshine and let us know everything's going to be fine. No, because there are times when ev in everyone's life where through no fault of our own or maybe even because of our own fault, we are forced to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And there's no question about whether or not this will happen. The only question is how will we respond? How will we deal with it? And I think there are a lot of people who deal with suffering and fearful anxiety poorly because they feel they are all alone. Even among friends and family, standing against a virus or some other threat that they can't control, at the end of the day, they have to take care of themselves because there's no one else that can do that the way they can. Uh, I'm just wondering if I mean, maybe if you know Christ, maybe you haven't felt that way in a long time. But can you can you feel that hopelessness? Can you can you sense that fear? Can you imagine yourself walking through that valley and looking around desperately for some light, for some indication that you will be through it soon, and finding and finding very little? I think the difference between people who handle this poorly and those who handle it better. I don't know if anyone handles it really, really well, um, is that those who have a shepherd, and not just any shepherd, but the one true good shepherd, those can walk through this valley without fear of harm. David says, I will fear no evil. Another translation is harm here. And that's how he handles the valley of the shadow of death. He does this because he has the Lord as his shepherd, as he's already said. You see, his hope is in the presence of the shepherd. His hope is not in the resolution of the circumstance that is causing his suffering. His hope is in God's presence. 
but the God who never changes, who is always there, who is committed to you and to me when we make him our shepherd. We've been talking about how some people have shepherds other than Jesus. Um, and he, he's the one, of course, who calls himself the good shepherd. And Jesus addresses this in John chapter 10. Now I want to read verses 11 through 13 of John 10. And I want you to hear this while you imagine yourself walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen to the words of Jesus here and let them comfort you and encourage you. He says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees the wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him, and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hands run away because they're only working for money and don't really care about the sheep. The reason so many people feel alone and anxious and fearful and hopeless in the valley of the shadow of death is because they know instinctively that the shepherds they have assembled in their life will fail them. Sooner or later, in one way or another, all they really have to count on is themselves. Their false shepherds run away at the sign of danger. They will abandon the sheep when things get rough and scary. They don't care about you or your problems. They, uh, they use the sheep, they use you to feed their own desires. For, to follow their own agenda. But Jesus said, I'm the one who lays down my life for the sheep. I will protect you with my life. If you have a shepherd like that and you're walking through a dark and dangerous place of suffering and difficulty, you can do so without fear of evil. You can handle the valley of the shadow of death without being anxious about experiencing harm. Now, I'm not saying that you won't experience harm or you won't be confronted uh, or or uh, tormented by evil. But David is saying that he will not fear those things because he knows his shepherd is stronger. He knows his shepherd is all will always fight for him. And he knows that no one can overpower his shepherd. When Jesus died on the cross, he fought the ultimate fight with evil and harm. He conquered the valley of the shadow of death by paying the price for our sin and dying in our place. His blood was perfect payment for all of our guilt and sin, so he took us out of that place of vulnerability and put us in a secure place. He put our feet on a rock, which was him. His salvation guarantees that no harm or evil will ever conquer us. It guarantees that we will be safe no matter what happens to us in this life. So, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God promises us to lead us through the dark valleys, through the dangerous places, but he does so as a good shepherd, with a rod and a staff telling us how to proceed disciplining us so that we can go through safely. If you're worried about financial security, for example, during this time, and your trust is in the Lord, I want you to be aware of his rod and his staff helping you to think twice about how to spend your money, helping you to think twice about things that you do and, and not wasting opportunity uh, with your family or your spouse or your friends. God will lead you through this and you will learn from it. We can experience comfort if we walk in obedience through the valley of the shadow of death, trusting in him to provide, trusting in the Lord to help us bear fruit as we reach out to our neighbors and family members, caring for them and showing and sharing the good news. Now, these are challenging times and the greatest challenges may yet lie ahead. But let's decide right now to pay attention to Jesus, the Good Shepherd and to follow him so that we will experience hope and courage and bear fruit regardless of our circumstances. Remember, your hope during this crisis is not that soon it'll be over. Your hope during this crisis 
is that God is with you. Let's pray together. Father, we can't thank you enough for the, the promises and the comfort of your word. We thank you for the knowledge that because you are our shepherd, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will carry us through uh, the, the, uh, the high waters and all the difficulties of this life and bring us to a safe place. We know we can depend on that. We know we can count on that. And because of that, Father, we can have courage. We can have hope and we can have joy, even in the midst of suffering. And we just thank you for that, Lord. And I pray for those that, that don't know you. And if there's anyone here watching this video and uh, you have never asked Jesus to be your shepherd, I encourage you to do it right now. Uh, you have no idea what you're missing. And uh, so, Lord, I pray that you would you would open hearts and, and cause people to respond to you, even now as they watch this video. And thank you, Father, for what you're doing and what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot. See you next time.